Are we the last to arrive? I hope we've not kept you waiting. Not at all. Your comrade is feeling better, I trust. Much better, thank you. Harness remedies are certainly potent in more ways than one. One becomes accustomed to the taste, although I hope you never have cause to do so. Pray, take your ease. Full glad I am to see you all unharmed. Alchemists throughout the land were put to work in the forging of your talismans. The finished ones have been collected, and now await you at the High Crucible of Alchemia. Present this letter when you are ready to take them into your possession. We are humbled by your generosity. Know that the inventive wisdom of Radzat Han will be vital in restoring serenity to our star. Every single one of those scales came from you, didn't they? You must still be in such pain. Tis of no moment. A mere annoyance compared to the dreadful suffering inflicted upon this land and its people. Albeit brief, my involvement in the Dragon Song War afforded me a glimpse of the myriad sorrows which consumed both dragon and man. Though you were half a world away, such tragedies as befell your kin must have affected you deeply. And yet, you chose to live among men. In the age when that conflict first bloomed, my choice had already been made. In some distant place, man slew dragon and dragon slaughtered man. Yet no hate could I muster for those smiling faces which did look to me for guidance. Not even my brother's righteous rage could rally me to his cause. I huddled here, secret and still, hoping against hope that which I had built would remain untouched by the chaos and carnage. Would seem we share the same desire for peace, great Vritra. To that end, I wonder if we might trouble you with another question. The Telophoroi are intent on recreating the final days, an apocalyptic event which we know to predate the sundering of the star. As the longest lived among us, know you aught of this terrible cataclysm. Nay, when war and strife drove my sire from his home, he crossed the great expanse with only our unhatched eggs as company. He alighted upon a shattered source, 
its thirteen reflections long since scattered beyond the rift. Of events preceding his arrival, he knoweth naught, save that which Hydralin hath deigned to disclose. I see. So again, tis the inscrutable Hydralin to whom you must look for answers. Seek you to divine the will of this star. If so, I have a tale which may afford you some small comfort. Tis a story from my youth, many, many years ago. To my sire, I once posed the question, of all the stars in the sky, why didst thou settle upon this one? To which Midgard Summer did reply, "'Twas the last bastion of hope." He believed, so long as Hydaelyn endured, so too might dragonkind. Solemn and portentous were his words. What deeper meaning they held, I could not, dared not pursue. Tis a stone I have left unturned ever since. Yet take you solace in the knowledge that whatsoever Hydralin does strive towards, tis an ideal which hath earned my sire's conviction. Thank you, Vritra. You've given us warm reassurance in a world gripped by cold uncertainty. While I'm sure we all have a great many questions, I think it's time we collect the talismans and be on our way. Our fight against the Talofaroi is far from finished. We must take our leave, but please do inform us if we can provide any further assistance. Prithee, a moment. There is one whom my sire hath judged worthy of honor and respect. The one known to men as Aorzea's champion. This hero of renown and rumor, tis thee.
Ah, apologies. We hadn't meant to interrupt. It's just that we do have a history of suddenly collapsing, and when you didn't follow us out... Tis I who must apologize. I have detained your champion over long with idle chatter. Go. At war's end, I pray I welcome thee back into my hall, where together with thy joyful comrades, you may toast your triumph. we were promised. Yes, and I made a quick count. There are far more than we could have hoped for. Enough to outfit an entire company of soldiers, in fact. Considering the involved process, that they were able to manufacture so many in such a short span of time is nothing short of a miracle. Once we have distributed them to our allies in Eorzea and the Far East, we'll have a fighting chance to bring down the other spires, just as we did with the Tower of Zot. Or we could use them to invade Garlemald proper and strike directly at the Telophoroi's base of operations. Of course, we would need to consult with various Alliance leaders before such a drastic measure could even be contemplated. To which end, I could set out forthwith and present the idea to each of our allies in person. Pray allow me to undertake some few of those journeys. I find myself restless and in need of purposeful duties. I can head eastward. Bosnia and Dalmasca are just a short hop from here. And Doma's Shinobi network should come in handy for passing on the word. We shall share the burden then. Meanwhile, I think it best that you and the others take the talismans back to the Baldessian Annex. We must keep them safe and secure until we've decided upon a course of action. Please, I must speak with you. Nidana? You're awake. Yes. When I spoke with the carer at my bedside, she told me that one of the scions, a young woman, had cleansed me of the Tower's corruption. It seems I've been asleep ever since the treatment. But when I awoke and learned you were all still here, I knew I had to come. As you said... Nidana was captured only recently. Such a brief exposure is swiftly cured, so I tended to her before we gathered at Megaduta. And I am truly grateful that you did. I cannot thank you enough. All of you, for everything you've done. Destroying the tower, rescuing our people. You've saved that mayor from an awful fate. Yet who has truly saved whom? Due in no small part to thine inspirational courage, the alchemists were successful in reproducing warding scales of proven efficacy. Replications of thy work now stand ready to travel across the seas unto the hands of those who might wield them against this rising evil. I 
was so groggy from sleep. I didn't even think to ask. Oh, our great work sent across the seas. It was worth it. Oh, it was all worth it. is completely changed. What do you have there? How unusual. I wonder if the effect is a reaction to Akasha. I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that term. Akasha? It is one of the unseen energies defined by Harnish alchemical theory. Though a gross oversimplification, some describe it as an essence influenced by feelings. You imply that it is distinct from ether. As foreign scholars often conflate the two, but we see them as separate concepts. Ether is an energy which permeates the land. It exists within animals, objects, even the air we breathe, affecting all through which it flows. Akasha, on the other hand, exists in a domain beyond our reach, a gift bestowed from on high or torn from the heavens in some traditions. Akasha can neither be created nor destroyed. It is beyond our power to purposefully alter or manipulate. The only thing observed to influence it is an abundance of, I want to say, spiritual emotion. As a veteran of the battlefield, surely you've experienced moments of desperation or exaltation when you've transcended the usual limits of your capabilities. That is a manifestation of Akasha, the invisible essence harnessed by heart, mind, and unyielding spirit. I really must hear more about this theory. Our disciplines are based entirely upon the idea that ether is the fundamental form of all energy. I'm glad my haphazard explanation has piqued your interest. But even for us, Akasha is a somewhat abstract field of study. A lack of practical application lends itself poorly to formalized research. Which is why my analysis of your flower can amount to little more than idle speculation. I am sorry. Nonsense! You have nothing to be sorry for. Your insight is much appreciated. Shall we depart for Charlian then? I will see to it that the talismans arrive at the Annex. And we will be in touch once our talks are concluded. I suggest you rest while you can. From here onward, sleep is bound to be in short supply.
Margaret, you're here. You haven't eaten yet, have you? We've bought quite a spread if you're interested. Only the finest dining from the last stand. Wonder, we invited Astinian as well. But he refused with a rather grim faced, No, thank you. I suspect Charlian cuisine is not to his liking. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Perhaps our lone wolf just needed some time apart. What? To perfect his brooding stare? Next time, I'll drag him out by the ear, sit him down in front of a Charlian feast, and see that he eats every last bite. An excellent idea. Of all people, warriors must take proper meals and rest, if they are to maintain a healthy constitution. Poor Astinian, beset on all sides. Speaking of one's physical condition, Mistress Cryle, I hear you recently played literal host to Heidelin herself. Ah, oh, and what an experience that was. Tiring, yes, but no lasting harm done. If anything, I should have liked to speak with her longer. I've not felt a hint of her presence since. Heidelin instructed you to carry that flower, yes? Twill be your guide, test and proof of your conviction. And then something about seeking joy in darkness, was it? Come to think of it, isn't that what happened with Nadana back in Radzat Han? The flower did seem to radiate a joyful glow, as if reflecting the elation we all felt, the relief of a people with renewed hope. Indeed, and in turn, I felt buoyed by that radiance. It was akin to spotting a beacon and knowing we were on the right path. I know we've not yet triumphed over the Tlophoroi, or learned the full breadth of the Forum's plans. But even within the midst of our struggles, we find small moments of joy to sustain us. Rare and hard won, perhaps, but it is this pursuit of happiness that gives us the strength to carry on day after day. Swift the spoils, though I recall that levitation spell of yours was quick enough. Mm, only barely. And even at my best, I'm still too slow to wield it effectively in battle. Mayhap I simply require more practice with this new magic. You unearthed it from the depths of Numenon, I presume? Aye and from a veritable mountain of arcane tomes at that. It was necessary to facilitate my solitary explorations. Or, to put it simply, you used it to sneak around the Forbidden Archives. I... Uh, yes, well, after a fashion.
The shelves, they're too tall for me. And I could hardly move the library's platforms without attracting attention now, could I? I'm not that ambitious, but it is pleasant to idle away the hours every once in a while. Enjoying the bracing cold, I see. Do you not own a warm coat or a cloak? Something in fur? Or fashioned from the skins of your enemies? Or... Well, never mind that. I come to you once more as the bearer of bad news. Our tower in Thavnir has been toppled. And I need not tell you by whom. Given how many we have at our disposal, the loss of a single spire is hardly fatal to our plans. It does, however, slow the rate at which we siphon the ether. If they continue to preoccupy themselves with the towers, then all will be well. But should our foe prove bold enough to strike at us here, then the timing becomes... Questionable. Our foe is bold enough. Of that, I can assure you. Ah, yes. Very well, then. I suppose I must prepare a proper welcome. Honestly. Talk of your nemesis is the only thing you seem to enjoy. Does nothing else spark your interest? Hmm... No. All else is... equal. Equally tedious. Equally disappointing. The world is a tepid bog into which we sink, too weak to thrash as the mud clings to our eyes and fills our throats till we blissfully choke. But then came the light, blinding and pure and hot, so very hot, enough to set my soul aflame. I basked in the afterglow, until the void yawned once more, and then I knew the muck would never claim me again. There was naught for me ahead, so I drew the curtain on all that had come before. Burn, burn, let the whole star burn. I will have my contest. I will reclaim my moment. How 
wonderful that the emptiness of death has not dissuaded you from committing your life to its pursuit once more. I don't know whether to envy you or pity you. You question my disinterest, but what of yours? Despite your noisome antics, I sense you take little pleasure in this endeavor. Mercy, my lord. Such pointed barbs from one who barely acknowledges my existence. Nevertheless, you are mistaken. For I do find this part somewhat enjoyable. You see, when I was mortal, I would always have the same dream. It was a fragmented thing, disjointed, all the faces incomplete. The setting, too, was unknown to me, so I thought it simply a fantasy of my sleeping mind. Until one day, I realized it was showing me the truth. Much as your dream of the final days enlightened you, And soon, very soon, the rest of the world will see the truth of my dream, too. Yes, I think that is something we can both enjoy. <laughs>